Hello my dear fellow flight sim enthusiasts. Welcome to another tutorial and today we are talking about crosswind landing and at the end uh, crosswind takeoff technique. In today's video I'm going to use uh, both X-Plane 11 and uh, P3D. The reason why I'm going to use X-Plane 11 is uh, because that software has a very unique um, add-on that allows to display the certain uh, lift vectors of an aircraft. Now this is already implemented in X-Plane 11. Uh, you do not need to buy that separately or anything. Um, just press Control M twice, I think it is, and that way the uh, following lines will appear. Here you can see um, all the different uh, lift vectors um, on an aircraft. So of course most of the lift is being created on the wings and um, you can see also some red drag lines. Um, here's for example the, uh, I assume, the complete uh, sum of all the uh, lifts and the sum of all of the drag. And so at the moment uh, we are maintaining altitude and maintaining speed, meaning that the uh, lift equals the weight and the uh, thrust equals uh, the drag and hence there is no acceleration in any direction. Here we can also see that the stabilizer at this very moment is not producing uh, much up or uh, down force and that means in turn there's not much uh, drag being created by the stabilizer which is optimal obviously uh, when in cruise flight. Now, before I talk more about the different uh, configurations of the aircraft um, and the different influences of the flight control surfaces, let me just uh, reiterate and uh, show you again how the uh, lift vectors and the center of gravity are actually located right now. So since the um, stabilizer doesn't have to produce much um, opposite lift or downforce, um, we can estimate that the uh, center of gravity, i.e. that uh, position where the weight acts on the aircraft, is uh, fairly closely located to the point where the net lift vector is uh, located. So uh, pretty much now, uh, just like in this picture, um, obviously the um, weight doesn't change during flight, apart from the fact that you're burning fuel. Um, and that we are losing uh, weight over time, but um, for this short period uh, that we're looking at now, um, that is negligible. So um, unless the lift vector itself changes, or the position of the lift vector changes, um, this equilibrium state uh, will remain. And again, we can see that the stabilizer at this present time does not have to um, produce much downforce. Um, and that means um, not much drag is um, created by the uh, stabilizer, uh, which is good um, for the uh, fuel consumption. Now, once we start configuring the aircraft for landing, the uh, lift vector will change. Um, it will become bigger for one, and hence we can fly slower and still produce the amount of lift needed to keep the aircraft um, in a stable level flight, for example. But most importantly, what will happen is that the net lift vector will move um, slightly backwards um, in relation to the uh, wing area. And that is due to the fact that the uh, flaps are being extended at the rear of the wings and also the uh, curvature um, increases quite drastically. And hence the uh, lift vector looks more like this in relation to the center of gravity. And so due to the fact that now um, the resulting moment um, will pull the nose down, um, the stabilizer has to be positioned in a way where it increases a more opposite lift or more down force and hence um, equalizing that different uh, moment. So I hope this visualize uh, to you guys a little bit better what happens when you extend the flaps and why suddenly you would need to trim the aircraft again. And from this picture um, I'm sure you will understand very easily that uh, if you slow down, i.e. Um, decrease the amount of lift available, um, then again the uh, force vectors change, the moment changes 
and the trim requirements change yet again. One last thing I would like to point out here in this picture is if you have a look at the position of the engines here, um, they're mounted below the wing and um, that way by um, thrust increase the nose will go up because of that moment change and if you decrease the thrust then the nose drops. Um, that is very important to, uh, to know um, and to realize once you are in the uh, flare over the runway um, that if you are decreasing thrust very rapidly be ready for a sudden nose drop. Okay, so before we uh, get to the uh, actual technique of crosswind landing, uh, let's have a look at uh, one very important aspect regarding the degrabbing of the aircraft during the flare, i.e. when aligning the nose with the center line of the runway. Um, aerodynamically, what happens is that if you press the rudder to one side, in this case, for example, the right side, you can see that the left wing comes forward very quickly and the uh, right wing comes aft and that means that the left wing is going to produce more lift than the right wing. And that of course induces a roll moment on the aircraft. And so on a conventional aircraft when you are applying rudder to get the nose straightened up be ready to use opposite roll input. Uh, to maintain um, the bank angle. So let's have a look at that uh, one more time. Um, this time just make sure to watch the uh, left wing and the uh, lift vectors there. Okay, so here comes the rudder input right now. You can see left is producing more lift than the right wing and hence you get the roll moment to the right. And that's exactly what I mean um, during the flare. Be ready for that uh, reaction and be ready to input the uh, opposite aileron. And so it is advisable to be careful with the rudder input. Maybe start a little bit earlier and then just make sure that the rudder input is uh, smooth and not so, uh, so sudden. Okay, so what happens in an A320 with its flight augmentation? Well here, obviously, um, we have to work the controls a little bit differently. And so, in an A320, when you apply rudder, the flight augmentation computers will do their best to keep the roll rate at zero. And I'll demonstrate uh, this with the uh, FS Labs A320 here. So have a look at the aileron uh, inputs here of rudder full right and we can see that the even though there's no stick input the flight augmentation uses aileron and spoilers to keep the roll at a zero i.e. also the bank angle which at this point is uh, wings level. Right, I'll show you again. This time from the outside you can see that full left rudder and the aircraft maintains uh, wings level without any pilot stick input. And just in case you guys are using x 11 with the flight factor A320, it's the same deal. If you apply rudder, the flight augmentation computers will make sure that the bank remains constant. In this case, wings level. And that means during the flare in the A320, when you use the rudder to align the nose with the center line, you will need uh, very little or no aileron side stick input. Okay, so now that we've uh, covered some of the important aerodynamic aspects during the uh, landing, we'll now uh, talk about the procedure itself. So whenever you have strong crosswind conditions at an airport that you're about to land at, um, a good mental preparation is vitally important for a good crosswind landing. So let's have a look at some basic rules first. Now on dry or uh, damp runways where the friction coefficient is very high, you want to decrab the aircraft as much as possible i.e. get the nose pointing pretty much down the runway heading before touchdown. 
This will make sure that the side with forces on the landing gear and the landing gear struts is minimized. And also it uh, prevents over controlling the aircraft uh, once it's on the ground. Um, you see that sometimes when uh, planes do these wild S curves on the runway. And that is mainly due to the fact that um, the aircraft touches down with too much side slip um, on a dry runway. And then of course uh, the pilots over reacting uh, from one side to the other. Um, and that can actually cause quite some big, big upsets. So again, guys, on dry runways, try to uh, decrab the aircraft as much as possible. Now on runways with uh, reduced braking uh, friction coefficients, it is advisable to actually land either with full crab or just take out maximum of 50% of the crab. Whatever you do, the important thing is that you do not allow the aircraft to start drifting away from the center line. And that drift can be very difficult to stop. And so the best thing is to not allow that drift in the first place. And to help you with that, like I said, on uh, runways with uh, reduced friction coefficients, decrab only um, a maximum of 50% of the drift angle. But this all boils down to Practice, practice, practice. And the more you practice, the more uh, confident you will get and the more experienced you will get um, to deal with these kind of conditions. Okay, also important uh, regarding the mental picture uh, for such an approach is um, ask yourself what to expect. And one of the aspects is that you're going to be faced with a very unusual picture. So the cockpit could be very far left or right of the center line of course, depending on the size of the aircraft itself. Um, if you take a 747, for example, with a 35 wind uh, crosswind, then the flight deck will be quite a long distance away from the uh, center line. And that uh, is really a very, very unusual picture. Also uh, unusual is the fact that, um, like in this example, um, you will have to apply left rudder and then in a conventional aircraft, as we discussed earlier, you're gonna have to input or be ready to input um, some right aileron um, at the same time. Okay, let's now talk about the technique itself. As always, um, vitally important is the stabilization. And that's the area between 500 feet and the touchdown. Um, try to be as stable um, as possible within these last 500 feet. Any big corrections that you need to do is gonna destabilize the approach and make a good landing a lot harder. Next, try to be slightly upwind of center line. And that is to allow for some drift um, when aligning the nose with the center line. Trust me, that drift will usually happen. Um, you can't stop that completely. Um, so just allow for it and try to be upwind. Then start the decrab phase early. Um, say in between 50 and 30 feet. Uh, that of course depends on the way um, your descent rate is at that uh, moment. Then uh, be ready to use a smooth rudder input. Um, do not what we call kick the rudder. Um, we've learned that fast movements um, caused by rudder input um, also causes a roll moment in the aircraft and especially with conventional aircraft, that can be very difficult to control at the same time. And so in case you do get a slight uh, bank uh, movement, then be ready to uh, address that, be ready for an aileron input. Now, depending on the amount of crosswind that you get, um, you might be faced with a little bit of bank um, in order to control the drift. If that does happen, try to avoid bank angles greater than five degrees because uh, some aircraft will start to be, uh, you know, having a problem with the engine nacelle maybe touching the ground. Um, or uh, if you go towards um, 10 degrees of bank uh, during the flare or touchdown, then you might be facing um, the wing fairings hitting the ground. So yeah, do try to avoid uh, big bank angles during touchdown. Quite important as well is after touchdown, uh, maintain aileron input. So do not let go of the flight controls. 
Um, <laughs> quite often you can watch the reaction. Oh, thank God, we made it to the ground. Um, they, the pilots relax their muscles and then uh, let go of the flight controls um, in that sense. Um, so try to avoid that. Maintain a positive um, aid or an input if you had that uh, during the flare and touchdown. Um, should you be drifted uh, off the center line, try to regain the center line smoothly um, and then try to slow down the aircraft uh, smoothly but quickly. Um, do not try to do a long uh, landing rollout, um, especially at high speed, because um, you know varying crosswind conditions, uh, gusty crosswind conditions, uh, make it difficult to control the aircraft even on the ground. So that's all for the theory for now. Let's have a look at some examples. Um, so here we'll have a look at the A320 first of all. Two hundred. And so as mentioned before, I'm trying to get a stabilized position here so that I have to do very little um, flight control 100. inputs. At 50 40, feet, a try 30, smooth decrabbing of the aircraft. Retard. Try to align the nose with the center line. Don't forget to you know, do the break of the aircraft and then aim for a smooth, well, at least a quick and hopefully smooth touchdown. So let's have a look from the outside. Well, we can see that I could have been a bit more right of center line, but the uh, the crabbing was very smooth. And um, the touchdown there was a bit firm, but uh, nevertheless, um, try to avoid um, a long flare of the aircraft, because that again um, might cause a drift to the edge of the runway. Okay, let's now have a look at the 737. Again, same principle, try to get into a good position here. Try a stable um, approach. 50, 40, and then, yeah, 30, start 20, taking up the uh, crab and make sure you have aileron input as well. From the outside, we'll take that with slow motion. So here comes the uh, D crab, and at the same time, you can see the ailerons being deflected. And uh, you won't always get it right uh, regarding the amount of rudder and the amount of aileron input at the same time. Um, so try to get the feel for that. And don't be uh, too focused on trying a smooth touchdown. Um, these are the kind of landings that require a, a quick and sometimes firm touchdown. Okay, so that's all that's uh, to it. Um, no other magic uh, that I can tell you. Um, so We'll leave it at that, and um, I'm just going to talk quickly about crosswind takeoffs here um, at the end of this video. Uh, the takeoff itself is obviously not quite so complicated, um, but the same principle applies that you try to differentiate between a conventional aircraft like the 737 and the um, A320. So things to consider for a crosswind takeoff. Um, you should consider a higher takeoff thrust setting in order to minimize takeoff roll distance. Now, obviously, you're going to maintain the runway center line with the rudder. Um, make sure that you put some forward pressure on the yoke or the uh, stick. And in the conventional aircraft, use positive aileron input right from uh, brake release. Um, in an Airbus, um, there shouldn't be any aileron input with normal kind of crosswind conditions. Um, only in very strong crosswind conditions, uh, you may use a little bit of uh, side stick input. And the reason for this is that in an Airbus 320, for example, the flight spoilers are pretty big. And um, so when you deflect the ailerons up to a certain point, the flight spoilers will come out, cause um, more drag, uh, more tendency for a, a yaw, and also cause um, performance penalties. So you try to avoid uh, any large um, aileron input. So these um, inputs are maintained until after liftoff. Um, at that point, you would relax the rudder input, meaning that the uh, nose of the aircraft will turn into the wind automatically. That's called weather vaning. And so the aircraft takes on the correct uh, wind correction angle. Uh, pretty much automatically. You will only have to do small corrections um, if you do it correctly. Okay, so much for theory. Let's have a look how it's done practically. 
So you can see that I'm already inputting some aileron uh, correction. Trying to maintain the center line with the rudder. Now the faster you get, the more effective the ailerons will be. So you might have to um, adjust that input. And then at rotation, make sure that the aircraft is not allowed to bank to the other side. And then just relax the rudder pressure, let the aircraft take on its uh, normal wind correction angle. And that's all there is to it. So let's now have a look at the A320. So you can see I'm only using forward stick uh, pressure input. And then when it comes to the rotation itself, I immediately apply aileron input into the wind. And so try to maintain wings level and then relax the rudder and let the aircraft take on its natural wind correction angle. Okay, so that uh, completes today's video about uh, crosswind landings and crosswind takeoffs. I hope you have enjoyed it. And so all I can say now is uh, go ahead and practice yourself. Practice makes perfect, right? And so I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, as always guys, take care. Happy landings.